and welcome to Faith and Flower. I'm Robin. Today's video is going to be a fun one. I am going to be taking a little break from YouTube for a couple of weeks to spend time with family. But before I go, I thought it would be fun to compile the top five recipes that are most requested here at Faith and Flower. These are recipes that I am asked about over and over by all of you, and they make regular appearances here at our home. So now all of these recipes will be in one video for you, and I will have all of the detailed recipes down in the description box for you to copy and paste if you like. This first one is pork chops in skillet cream sauce. So good and so easy. This pork chop recipe is probably in my top five favorites of all time. I love it because it is sort of an elegant meal, something that is definitely worthy to serve to your guests, but it's so simple you can make it on any weeknight as well. I will have my recipe down in the description box for you, but it is so simple. It's something that I think you'll be able to make without referring to a recipe. I make it all the time. It's just a few steps. So just start off by seasoning your raw pork with some salt and pepper and then saute them in butter over medium to high heat until you get a nice crust on each side of the pork. Remove the pork to a plate and then lower the heat. You can stir in some orange marmalade. Sometimes I substitute apricot or peach preserves. They work really well too, so whichever you have on hand. I use probably one to two tablespoons. I just eyeball it, I never measure. And I just stir that around the pan, trying to get up all of the brown bits, basically deglazing the pan. And then once I've done that, I add a couple of tablespoons approximately of some Dijon mustard. And I actually didn't have Dijon when I made it this time, so I just used some spicy brown mustard. Anything that's sort of like a grainy mustard works as well. You really can't mess this up. Final ingredient is eight ounces of heavy cream. So that's all there is to this recipe. It is very simple, but it's full of flavor. It's just absolutely delicious. Mix everything together really well, and then you can adjust the seasoning. If you need a little more salt and pepper, this is the time to add it. Increase the heat to medium and bring the sauce to a simmer. You can return the pork and its juices to the pan and allow the pork to simmer in the sauce for eight to 10 minutes or until the pork has reached an internal temperature of 145 degrees. serve this over rice. It is such a delicious sauce and it works really well with rice. But on this night, I sauteed some spinach and served it with some of the sauerkraut that I made, if you remember from my last video. It was delicious. It was a really great combination. My family really enjoyed it. It lightened up the meal a little bit and I found that we really didn't miss the rice at all. It was great this way. This next one is something that I love to make here at home. It's kind of a light dish that works really well any time of the year. It's really delicious and pretty good for you too. Next up is Mediterranean chicken with sun-dried tomatoes, artichokes, and capers. I'm pretty sure I've shared this recipe with you guys before, but it's worth revisiting because it's a good one. It tastes amazing and it's really fast and easy. So it's just 30 minutes total time. So that's just 10 minutes of prep and about 20 minutes of cook time and you have a fabulous meal on the table. I made four chicken cutlets by cutting two chicken breasts in half, then sprinkled with some salt and pepper. Then I dredged the chicken in flour. I know my technique is not perfect, but I was trying to save time and dishes. I do that a lot. <laughs> so I just sprinkled some of the flour over top and I used a gluten-free brown rice flour, but you could use all-purpose flour if you don't need to be gluten-free. Heat 
two tablespoons of olive oil in a large skillet on medium high heat. Then add the chicken and brown for about four minutes until it turns a nice golden color. Then flip the chicken over to the other side and brown the other side for another four minutes or so on medium heat. Remove the chicken to a plate and then add in the sun-dried tomatoes, artichokes, capers, and lemon juice to the same skillet. Stir to combine on medium heat, making sure you scrape up all of those little bits on the bottom of the pan that add so much flavor. Then reduce the heat to medium low. The original recipe calls for an additional two to three tablespoons of olive oil, but my sun-dried tomatoes are packed in olive oil, so I didn't add that and it came out great. Push the vegetables to the side of the skillet and add the chicken back in. Cook the chicken and the vegetables on low medium heat for about five to 10 minutes more covered until the chicken is completely cooked through and no longer pink in the center. Serve immediately and make sure to spoon the olive oil mixture of vegetables from the skillet over the chicken. This is a really easy one pot meal that our family loves, so I hope yours will too. This fish recipe is so easy and so delicious, you have to give it a try. It is made with basically any type of white fish. I'm using barramundi. I'm not sure I pronounced that right in the video, but I've been corrected and I think I've got it now. And it's got fire roasted tomatoes, capers, and artichokes. Absolutely delicious, so let's take a look. To make the fish, I start off by adding some olive oil to my pan and heating for a few minutes on medium. And then I add a chopped onion and saute that. is translucent and is just starting to turn that golden brown color I like to add in the garlic and I tend to go kind of light on the garlic and so that's why I really like these frozen packets they're a little bit more expensive but they're super convenient so I keep those on hand and use those lots of times when you don't have fresh garlic on hand and once that sort of melted into the onions I add one can of fire roasted chopped tomatoes Next, I put in a couple of tablespoons of capers. I don't measure, I just sort of eyeball it. I really like capers, so I tend to go a little heavy on that. When I was stirring everything together, I realized that there was a stem from the tomatoes. So <laughs> these are definitely off the vine tomatoes and these fire roasted ones are amazing. So I just remove that and then it's time to add a little spice. And I think you can really do whatever you like here. Some fresh basil would be amazing. I tend to go for the dried oregano. That's also really good. And that's what I used in this recipe today. And I just used about a teaspoon. mixture is bubbling I add the fish and I just try to cover it with some of the sauce and let it sort of poach in the juices and the fish always comes out super juicy no matter what type of fish you like to use I really like some sort of a white fish in this recipe and this barramundi was really good
this dish any time of year, but it's especially nice in the summertime because it doesn't take long, so you don't have to spend a lot of time over a hot stove when it's hot outside. This dinner is elegant enough to serve to guests, and it's great because it's on the table in no time and doesn't take you away from entertaining your friends or family. And you can serve it with a side salad, but when it's just our family, I just treat it as a one-pot dinner. It really has all of the elements, and my family always loves it. This is what I like to call healthy morning muffins because they're great for breakfast, but they also make a great snack or even dessert. If you like carrot cake, I know you're gonna love these. They're good for you, but you don't need to know that because they taste amazing. So give these a try. These oat and chip cookies are probably the one recipe that I've gotten the most positive feedback here at Faith and Flour. It's also requested quite a lot in our home. These cookies are delicious. They're pretty good for you with the oats and they can easily be made gluten-free. In the recipe, as I'm showing you in the video, I'm using regular all-purpose flour, but you can very easily swap out a cup for cup gluten-free flour. So give these a try. I promise you they will be a hit and a crowd pleaser. I am making it today with regular wheat flour because the family I'm providing it for doesn't need to eat gluten-free, but you can substitute cup for cup with the blend that I showed. I do follow a recipe for this and I developed this recipe many years ago. I will put it down in the description box so that you can copy, cut, and paste it if you like.
you so much for spending your time with me here today. I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, don't leave without giving me a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. I also want to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. We would really love to have you join us here at Faith and Flower. And I love hearing from you. So make sure to leave me a comment below before you go. And I will be away for the next couple of weeks, but I will be back soon with a new video on Sunday afternoons at two o'clock. So until then, have a wonderful week. Thank you.